Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do a detailed review on this Ninja Dual Brew Coffee Maker, model number CFP300. This is the specialty K-cup and 12-cup coffee maker with frother. So this coffee maker looks a lot like the Dual Brew Pro, which is a model number CFP301, but this is a CFP300. It doesn't have the hot water dispenser. It has everything else, but it doesn't have the hot water dispenser. So right now, Walmart is, is selling this one. They've got it on sale for $170, but it retails for $200. It's got the really nice touch display that the Pro has. This is the Pro model. This is the CFP301. It's got this hot water dis separate dispenser that I can have hot water come out in a separate area. This one looks almost identical, except there is no hot water dispenser, but it does have a, it has the frother. So they also sell this model. It doesn't have the frother or the hot water dispenser, but it is called a Ninja Dual Brew Coffee Maker. My very next video, I'm gonna compare all three of these Ninja Dual Brew Coffee Makers. But today we're gonna to make a K-cup and we're gonna make a pot of coffee. So it's got a power button up here. When the power is off, it displays the clock, kind of in a dim mode. Press the power button. It's got this knob you turn and it's got a drip stop. It's a manual drip stop. That stops the coffee coming out the bottom. And it's got brew styles. So we can press this button here. We got classic, rich, over ice, and specialty. Specialty only does four ounces. So it does have a glass carafe. This is 12 cups. This is a little different than their older coffee makers, which were only 10 cups. It does have a warming plate, and it's got this little tray that comes down. It's got kind of some grippy on it. So the craft seems very well built. That seems like they upgraded the, the glass maybe. It seems a little thicker. But getting this lid on and off can be a little tricky. You got this arrow that points towards where you pour. You got to turn it all the way, almost like you're turning at 180, but you got to go past that and then it comes off. To put it in, you got to put it right here. And then it should, yeah, see this is probably the trickiest part of the whole deal. Then it should turn around and then it should hear that snap. That means it's on there, correct. We've got a really nice reservoir. It's got a nice kind of like carrying handle you can take it on and off with. Up here's where it starts to get a little different. So Ninja's got this pot adapter. This is for K-cups. We lift this up. We can put a K-cup in here. It's got a needle on the bottom. There's three needles on the top. Now, I have not seen a reusable K-cup yet. It just takes standard K-cups but I have not seen a reusable K-cup that will fit this. That's kind of a, um, a different setup there that I've not seen before. So you put it in there, and then when you do a K-cup, it knows you're in the, the pod setting. It knows it has the pod adapter in, so it's only gonna give you ounces. Six, eight, 10, or 12 ounces is all you can brew. Now, if we wanna do coffee, we gotta take this out. So we've got this sticker here that says remove. So we gotta move this handle, it slides back and forth and it activates the display. There's like a micro switch in here. Go to remove, and then you can lift this, this pod adapter out. It's kind of big. It is dishwasher safe, but I don't know that I would put it in the dishwasher. Now we've got, this is the brew basket. This is like a standard uh, cone, number four cone brew basket. This has to be in for all, whether you're doing a K-cup or coffee. And then we've got this slide for grounds. This is your brew head for, ground, for coffee. And when I slide it, you'll see the display changes to the coffee bean. Originally, we had the pod. Now, if I lift this up back here, I can take this brew head all the way out. And then it just slides on a track. You can see the hot water is getting there in this little tube right here to pour over the coffee grounds. Now, it does not come with a reusable filter. You've got to buy, if you want a permanent filter, Ninjas, the older Ninjas came with a permanent filter, but you've got to buy their one. You can't buy just a standard number four reusable filter, but it does take standard number four cone filters, paper. So you just put them in here, hug them up against the wall and put your coffee in. Again, it takes a number four, eight to 12 cup. They're called cone filters. And the box does come with a few filters, but you will need to get some more. So another neat feature, I can move this reservoir around back. So take the reservoir off. There's this little tab panel here. Pull this little panel off. And now this reservoir will just swing around. 
then you can put this this thing just reverse it and put it in over here and now my reservoir takes up less space I can have it on the back so it gives the coffee maker a completely different look it's more of a long front to back you're almost at 13 and a half inches side to side you're around seven inches so we do have to have some room at the top. It's almost 19 inches long. It will barely fit under a kitchen cabinet because of this pod adapter that you have to be able to lift that up to get the K-cup in and out. Okay, so let's do a K-cup first. So let's grab the pod adapter. Make sure it's in the remove position. We're just gonna set it up here. It fits, again, that brew basket has to be installed. The coffee thing is slid back. You're just gonna put this in. It fits there real nice. But then you've got to slide this to the lock position. And when I do that, you'll see, turn it on. See the display? It kind of activates the display. So if, if your display is not showing anything, that, does, that means you don't have it activated. Now I can lift this handle up. I can't lift this handle up when it's in the remove. So slide it to the lock. I can lift this handle up. You're simply going to just put the cake up in. It's going to pierce the bottom and the top when you close it. Now, I now see how the pod is lit. I don't have, I only have six, eight, 10 or 12 ounces. If I wanna do four ounces, I gotta hit the specialty brew. And I can change the brew. I can go classic, rich, over ice, and a specialty. I'm gonna do a separate video on specialty and over ice. They're kind of, those settings, um, they act a little different. And I, want, I had to do a specific video just on those. So. We're just gonna do a classic bruise. And I like to do my K-cups on eight ounces. So just turn this little selector to eight ounce, or no, eight ounce. And then just hit the, the center of it, that's the brew. Now it does beep at you when it starts and it beeps at you when it's done. And I don't know a way to turn those beeps off. They're not really loud. It hasn't bothered my dogs, but they do beep. Make sure this drip stop is open. If it's closed, it won't start the brew. It'll just sit there and beep at you. About 175, 185, 186. One ninety-five. So it does warm up quite a bit. Just not at first. Now these lights that you see are going across, those are like status lights. That lets you know where the brew is. So it'll start out over here and it'll eventually work its way over to here to let you know that it's it's done brewing. It's not very loud. So you get four beeps at the end and it does say the word end. There's your cup of coffee. So let's see how that coffee ends up. It's about 167, that's about standard. Now the older Ninja coffee makers, if you check out my video on the comparison with the older Ninja specialty brew coffee makers, they did produce a little bit warmer cup of coffee, but this is still really hot. I mean, you can't drink that right now. But it does cool off quick, but the older ones do produce a little bit uh, hotter. I think this coffee tastes really good. It's a K-cup. Um, it just tastes really good to me. And again, if you, if, you like, if you want to brew 6 ounces, you can brew 10 ounces. 12 ounces seems way too watered down for me because a K-cup, you can only get 2 tablespoons of coffee grounds in a K-cup. So 8 ounces seems just about right to me. So let's see how the K-cup did. We're just gonna lift to open, make sure it's in the lock position. There's the needles, there's the K-cup. We can see it's kinda of hot, now be careful. It pierced the bottom. And there's how it did. There's not, there's not too many coffee grounds, but you're gonna to wanna to do fresh water rinses. Leave no K-cup in there and then just close this and just do a normal brew, but throw the water away. Those are fresh water rinses. Yeah, I forgot to mention, so keep make sure that you've got the water reser reservoir full and you do have to prime the pumps. I've got a video on how to prime the pumps and get the, get the coffee maker ready to work. And it does have a, a milk frother here. I do like the Ninja, it's, 
it's pretty much like their old milk frothers. When you press the button, it froths. So you got to hold it, but it's very easy to clean up. Comes off very, very easy to clean up. They do have a storage for the scoop. I do like the scoop and I do like having it there readily available. We're going to be using this next when we make a cup of coffee. So now we're going to take this, we're going to remove this pot adapter. So slide this to remove. It just lifts out. It's very simple how it works. Now we've got to leave, make sure this is in there. This is the basket. Put your permanent filter in there or reusable filter or your paper filter. Here's my cone filter. Put it in, kind of smash it. Make sure it's hugging the walls. And then we're going to put our coffee in. Okay, so you have a lot of, so let's talk about doing coffee grounds with. You're just going to use a normal drip coffee maker at ground at a medium grind. But it has nine different brew sizes. So it can get a little confusing, but you see how I've got the, I got it slid forward. It shows the coffee bean. That means we're doing coffee and not cake up. So now we can start all the way up. We can do a small eight ounce cup. It's got two, a 10 ounce, 12 ounce, 15 ounce. These are travel mugs. Then the, then you start to get into where the carafe is. It's got like a small carafe, 37 ounces in a full carafe. So four different craft settings. And remember full 55 ounces is like a standard 12 cup coffee maker. Now the nice thing about this is, is so when you're using, when you select carafe, it turns the warming plate on. So this has a warming plate right here. And when I'm brewing a carafe, it keeps the, it turns the warming plate on automatically. Now, if I'm brewing a travel mug or a small glass, this thing does not turn the warming plate on. That's a very nice feature. And I can come up here and I can turn the warming plate on and off uh, manually with this. You'll see a little warm button right here after it's done brewing. And I can adjust the time that the warming plate stays on. And again, this drip stop is going to come into play whenever we do a pot of coffee. Again, it's manual. The light shows open and closed. So let's try to do a brew. See, if it's in closed, this flashes at you and it beeps at you. It doesn't do the brew because the coffee won't come out the bottom. So I'm going to do a full pot. On the right here, it says four to seven scoops. So that big scoop holds about two tablespoons. So I normally do one tablespoon per cup I'm going to brew. So I normally do 12 tablespoons of coffee grounds in here for a 12 pot cup of coffee. So I'm not going to, so seven would be 14. I'm going to do six. Six of these big scoops is six, is 12 tablespoons. So you just grab your coffee and you just dump it right there in the middle. So one, two. Okay. I've got six of these large scoops in there, which is equivalent to 12 tablespoons. I'm doing a full craft, so I got to make sure my water reservoir is filled all the way up to the top. Now the water reservoir is a little harder to see when it's in the back. It's a little nicer when it's on the side. You can see how much water you've got. So now I slide this for grounds, slide it all the way and make sure you all the way it activates the display. Pick what brew style you want, classic, rich, over ice specialty. We wouldn't want to do that many coffee grounds with specialty. So just hit a classic, pick your size. I'm going to do a full craft all the way to the right. Make sure this is open and you just hit this button. The keep warm comes on. That lets me know that the warming plate, it's going to activate the warming plate. I turned it off. Sorry. So be careful. That touch screen is kind of sensitive. So it starts brewing right away. So mainly your steam is coming out of these ports right here. But I've got coffee coming out. Okay, so it brews for about 20 seconds and then it pauses. So you may think it's stopped. It's not, you won't hear the pump running. You hear coffee running out. And now it kicks back on. So it pauses for about five to 10 seconds and then, it, then it's gonna continue to brew the rest of it. And it is kind of a quiet coffee maker. It does gurgle a little bit towards the end and at the beginning, but as, it, but as it's brewing the coffee, it's you hear a pump running, but it is relatively quiet. And you'll see the status. These status lights are going across and they'll eventually reach over to here and it's gonna beep at us. 
Now, if any time during the process, say you get some coffee in here and, and you're anxious to get a cup of coffee, you can, that's what this drip stop comes into play. You can go to, you can go to close. You can pour you a quick cup of coffee. Now it does stop the brewing process and you can't stop this very long. Get you a cup of coffee, put this back, and then just, it continues the brew process. You're definitely gonna wanna throw this to close when you're done. What I have found is it does drip. So, as, so when this thing is done brewing, you're gonna wanna get in the habit of putting this to close because as you're pouring your coffee, it's gonna make a mess. It does drip onto the burning plate. This does not have an automatic feature where it stops the drip. So you will have to get in the habit of moving that lever when it's done brewing. Let's check the temperature. One eighty nine, so about one ninety. So the default for that keep warm that keeps the warming plate on is two hours. I can change that to four hours though. I'm going to do a separate video on that and how to program the coffee maker because you can program this to start to have a fresh pot of coffee in the morning. But say after two hours, you know, say you've got it set for two hours and the warming plate turns off automatically, you can come up here and turn the warming plate on and reheat that coffee. That's a feature that's not found in many coffee makers. Again, I'm gonna do a separate video on specialty, or a specialty brew, like doing a cappuccino or latte, check out that video. And also iced coffee, it's a little different. It makes a good iced coffee. It's just, there's some things you gotta watch out for. It also has a clean light, so I'll, when the clean light comes on, it's time to descale. This thing has a descaling mode. I'll show you, I got a video on how to do that. Now, in some of those videos, it, I'm gonna be doing the video on the Pro model. They apply to this one too, like the high altitude setting, the programming, the specialty brew, and the over ice. You'll see it with the Pro model, which has the, uh, the water hot water dispenser. That doesn't come into play when you're doing those drinks, and it acts exactly the same as the pro model when you're doing those drinks. So it sounds like it's done. It's not, it's kind of letting it finish dripping coffee, even though it kind of looks like it's done and it's really quieted down. But my thing display over here is, is continue to go and it hasn't beeped at me. I could end it right now and just hit that to close. That would end the brew. So that took about eight minutes. That's a very fast coffee maker for 12 cups of coffee under in eight minutes, that's that's pretty quick. There is a very dim light down here that shows you a warning that this the warming plate is hot. I wish that was a little bit brighter, but it's very dim right there that shows you that it's the warming plate is on. And again, the warming plate light is on and that'll stay on for from zero to four hours. You can adjust that. Okay, so it's beeping at me. It says the word end, so let's Grab a cup of coffee, let's see how it brews. Now see, I didn't do the drip stop. You're gonna wanna get in the habit of doing that drip stop because it just continues to drip. So let's see how the craft pours. It pours okay, it kinda comes out a little fast. So be careful. Yeah, that's about a 175. So a little bit hotter than the K-cup. That's a very hot cup of coffee. I've been having the coffee out of these, the Ninja Dual Brews, very good cup of coffee. It does make a very rich, just a standard good cup of coffee. So let's see how this did. You're just gonna slide this back. There's our coffee grounds. It didn't overflow. I like to see that the water didn't rise up like the coffee grounds aren't up here, so it didn't come close to overflowing. Cleanup is very easy. You just lift this out, take this to the trash can, and dump that out. So let's go over cleanup. All three of these parts are dishwasher safe. This one seems a little awkward to put in the dishwasher. I would probably rinse this by hand and get a brush and brush that once in a while, shoot some water down this tube, brush that, you know. This is very simple. I, I rinse mine out, and about every fourth or fifth brew, I'll put this in the dishwasher. Same with this. I don't... Uh, put it in the dishwasher after every time. Getting this lid on and off is the hardest part. You just got to remember to turn it all the way to there. And then when you put it back on, you got to start there and turn it. And then turn it all the way till it clicks. 
So again, it takes any standard K-cup. It doesn't have to be made by Keurig. You can take generic K-cups. It does come with a quick start guide, which is really nice. And the manual, it's for the 300 series. So you may see, see how it's got the, it's got the pro on here. So it may talk about the hot water dispenser. When you've got the hot water dispenser, you've got a whole separate display for the hot water. This one does not have that, but you'll see it's for the 300 series. So this is the 300 and the 301 is the pro, but it's a very nice coffee maker or coffee maker with a nice manual. Again, I've got a video to show you how to do the over ice. The specialty brew is very nice. It's got a very nice display and it, it looks very modern and classy. It's a, it might be just a, a little big, but it actually looks like a very nice coffee maker when it's sitting on your counter. People have been asking me how long is it gonna last? You know, they just released this. I haven't had any problems with mine. My previous Ninja coffee makers were very reliable. Um, again, if you get a bad one, it, you know, it, might, it probably usually fails within the first month or two. But if you keep up on the D scale, keep up with the regular cleaning routine, I think they should last you. It it's definitely seems like it's well built. The only thing that'll take some getting used to is this drip stop. That took me, that probably took me the longest to get to. Everything else seemed pretty, pretty easy to figure out. There was a couple times where the, the lid wasn't activated. I'm like, what's going on? It, it won't do nothing. But if you just remember, there's a micro switch up there. But getting the drip stop was probably the hardest part. But once you, but then, then it, like if you, if you leave it in close and you try to do a brew, it won't let you and it flashes it. So it kind of lets you know what's going on. Thanks everybody for watching.